So let's look at this option D question. So outline a method for dating fossils using carbon-14. The principle of carbon um, dating is that, firstly, organisms mostly contain carbon-12, the minority of carbon-14. Let's say 99% of the carbon molecules in an organism, in a living organism that is, is carbon-12, and 1% is carbon-14. So this ratio of 99 to 1, which we were given, is fixed and determined by the environment. So a small proportion of carbon molecules, which might be uptaken through um, ingestion of food, um, is going to be in the same ratio, 99 to 1. This is just an example, of course. Now, moving down uh, the paper, the third point is that once the organism dies, the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 decreases, because you're not ingesting any more radioactive carbon, because you can't ingest when you're dead, of course. So therefore, instead of saying having 1% carbon-14 to 99%, uh, to you might only have 0.5% carbon-14 to 99.5% uh, carbon-12. So as you decompose further and further, you'll have less and less carbon-14 uh, relative to, to carbon-12. And this principle can be used to determine the age of a fossil. The less carbon-14 there is relative to carbon-12, the, the, the older the molecule or the older the specimen is. Now, the half-life of carbon-14 is approximately 60,000 years. So if a fossil is extremely long, say if it was 200,000 years old versus 4 million years old, you'd have no idea what the difference is because the amount of carbon-14 is going to be so small, you can't tell the difference. That's where the half-life of carbon-14 is important. So remember to put that down as point, point number 5. And these particular um, specimens cannot be carbon-dated. So it's a nice little um, principle that you need to know uh, in regards to carbon, carbon dating. Now, the second question, worth three points. Outline the trends in, illustrated by the fossils of Ardipithecus and Australopithecus. And uh, the easiest way to go about this question is to first realise that Ardipithecus is more primitive than Australopithecus. How do you know this? A, they're actually just in alphabetical order. So AR comes before AU. So therefore, Ardipithecus comes before Australopithecus. So now I'm drawing this particular diagram here. So I'm just drawing like a person. And we're going to first talk, talk about its height. Then we're going to talk about its head or brain size. We can talk about its teeth structure as well as the toe structure. And these are four different points, easy points that you can remember. So let's look at... Um, the first point, which is we're going to talk about its height. So, from Ardipithecus to Australopithecus, you have an increasing height because you have Australopithecus being taller than the previous one. And this is because uh, previously Ardipithecus had more of a stooped, bending over structure. Australopithecus standing up, being much more, um, being much more upright than its more primitive cousin. The second point we're going to talk about is brain size. Now there's increasing cranial capacity, and this seems intuitive, at least to myself, I'm not sure if to you as well. Um, Australopithecus had a larger brain size in comparison to Ardipithecus. It's just like people get, are getting smarter and smarter. So if you compare Homo sapiens with Australopithecus, or the current modern day human compared to with a primitive um, human or primitive uh, humanoid, then you will have an increasing cranial size once again. So, thirdly, we're going to talk about um, tooth structure, and most modern-day people now are omnivorous, so they eat both plants as well as meat. However, previously with Ardipithecus, they would have they, it wasn't um, so much more. It wasn't it wasn't so. So when we look at uh, modern day human human beings or modern day humanoids compared to their pre primitive ancestors the current day tooth structure is much more um, is much more suited to an omnivorous diet and that's the point that you need to know the final thing we're going to talk about is a toe structure and um, we talked about how the, the more primitive um, humanoids, they tend to be stooped over and sometimes even walked on all fours. And with Australopithecus being a, a, a somewhat more um, advanced version compared to um, Ardipithecus, um, the toe structure was more suited to be bipedal. So bi two pedal means feet, so they're able to stand on two feet. And that's the final point for this question.